Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So this video is going to be kind of a combination of some stuff. So I want to go over some of those court documents from years ago with Shonda and Eric with the whole child custody information and stuff like that. I, I did go over them kind of quickly on a live before. It was at the end of a live and I feel like it might, it could get lost in the mix of things. So I would figured I'd go over that again. But first, I want to go over some Twitter posts on her Twitter account, Shonda's. Some interesting Twitter posts, okay? So let's just get right into those. So on March 9th, 2018, she put a picture of her and her dog. It says, while we watch live PD sticks, he did SNR after the 2013 Moore tornado when we lived in Oklahoma City. Had a live find after the tornado. Don't miss Oklahoma though. August 20th, 2019. Oh geez, so not a selfie person, but just for you, Bill. And Bill's as Bill Polte, Polte or whatever. You'll see in most of her tweets, she's retweeting him. He gives away free money and she's trying to get it. So here is her with her dog. It says, cutest puppy ever. This is February 26th, 2020. March 7th, 2020, it says, thank you so much. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Busy with law school, but that's life in law school. Pick is us at school a couple weeks ago. And then you see there down there to the right, she writes, we need strong constitutional lawyers though. And I tried to serve after high school, had an appointment to the AFA, but have a screw in one shoulder, so did not get to attend. Thank you so much for your service. March 19th, 2020, in class online for law school. Uh, July 6, 2020. Oh, he very much is 95 pound lap dog laying in my 18 year old's lap. She's responding to somebody saying beautiful color. I don't see chocolate. He looks like a big lover boy. Paul with the dog. So this is September 25th, 2020. Somebody says such a lap dog. She says, yes, his upper body is literally on my lap in this picture. Crazy critter, but I love huge lap dogs. Okay, she says, love you too. And then she says, yeah, that picture was at seven or eight months old, Sam. This was just the other day. And no, nothing wrong with his eye, just bad timing on the picture, LOL. And I'm trying to figure out what picture they, she's referring to. I can't find that picture though, where, uh, what she's talking about that was from seven or eight months ago. I don't know what she's responding about, but okay. So let's see what the next one is. So now we have October 11th, my birthday. <laughs> um, it says that Porty guy that gives away free money that she's like every, almost every tweet, it's retweeting his stuff, trying to get the money, right? So he says, today my game plan is to help someone with student debt. Why? Because student debt sucks. And she says, have about 2,500 in student loan debt from undergrad. Fortunately, went to grad school on a full scholarship. Brag, 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 brag. <laughs> That's, I think that was just her chance to brag about her full scholarship. Anyway, and then October 17th, he's saying ready. She says, hubby just lost his job. Horrible timing. Anything helps. So the thing is, is he, if he just lost his job in October, why was I thinking she said he lost it when he had the stroke? And that was the whole thing. I mean, maybe I misunderstood or whatever, but reading this stuff, it sounds like he lost it way like a while before that. And he, they were trying to get unemployment and it was, they were having trouble getting unemployment. And then he had the stroke. Maybe you guys knew that. I don't know. And then another one where he says, knock, knock, and he went home. And she says, yeah, try not to stress out over hubby losing his job is all. And then October 19th says, it is that time of day when we help people and she says, please, husband lost a job and he's looking for another one, but he is in a wheelchair. So people really underestimate him with a sad face. And uh, Pulte says, a thousand dollars remains. And Shonda says, would be huge since hubby lost his job. Two attorneys already, but nothing yet. And then he said, Pulte says, think I should help some people with dinner. What you say? Shonda says, please, family of five with two teenagers and had notifications on for a while now. In December 1st, 2021, he says $500 incoming. And Shonda says, please, hubby got laid off and he has to prove himself to people to get moved up to full time because he's in a wheelchair and unemployment is taking forever. We have three boys, so it's desperate right now. And then December 3rd, she says, please, notifications on. December 24th, 2021, he says, Christmas Eve, Team Pulte style. She says, oldest is married, out of state, but almost nothing for Christmas for the other three this year. It's a picture of all of them. Eric, Gabe, Paul, and Timothy. This is the probably the most recent Timothy picture I've seen. He looks pretty gosh darn skinny in this. He almost looks sickly. So this would be December. So this would be after he was already living with her for... 
So May. So he's already live, been living with them for seven months by this time. Supposedly, the real extreme abuse didn't start till January after Adam had a stroke. But we don't know for sure because law enforcement is just trying to guess in a way because as far as the text between her and Paul, that's when they start seeing them. So that's the only, pr you know, like the main proof that they have of when it started. But that, that doesn't mean that it didn't start at least to a degree before that because he looks kind of sickly to me. Like uh, he's not probably eating very well. And it almost looks like like his teeth, like he's lost his teeth or something. It looks like his gums. I don't know for sure, but it almost looks like maybe he has no teeth. Do you see his gums right there? I don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe he does, but it almost looks like, I mean, maybe not, but you can't tell. So January 3rd, Pulte says $1,200. So he's giving away $1,200. She says, please, my husband had a stroke in the middle of the night and we have no paid leave or anything saved up. And then January 3rd says, Husband had a stroke in the middle of the night and no clue when he can go back to work. And I have no paid time off to use. And we have no savings to back us up. Any help is appreciated. And then another one. Please, please, please. Hubby had a stroke in the middle of the night. And we have no savings and no money for child care while he recovers. And then he says, somebody posted, You guys bought this stud, Ryan, a new wheelchair. Thank you. So that comes from Porty right? So, of course, she has to respond. Cool, hubby has been in a wheelchair his whole life. So, is she, what, what, what are you trying to say, Shonda, that, oh, he deserves it more because he's been in it his whole life and this guy hasn't or something? Come on. Anyway, April 9th, it says $1,500, actually. I'm thinking like 100 to 15 people. And Shonda says, please, desperately need groceries for my three boys. Yeah, for your two boys, you mean. Anyway, that was April 9th, 2022. So this was after the extreme starvation already started. And then April 9th again, he says, I don't know if he tweets it again or she just retweets it again. It says the same thing, 100 to 15 people who need a little love in, in life. Oh, it is a different one because he, he words it different. Okay. So she retweets it and says, my three boys and I need the love. Yeah, Timothy needed the love, freaking Shonda. Okay, so April 10th, Pulte says, time to help the people. Shonda says, please, today is my second son's birthday. He, he turned 20, ugh. And then he said, Pulte says, I'm thinking we help dozens this week. 15 yesterday, many more today. Shonda says, please, can't do anything for my second son's birthday today. Hubby had a stroke a few months ago and I'm trying to support us by myself right now. And he says, $1,000, she says, oh my God, that'd be huge. He says, people ask why I don't give away like 200,000 in one day. Well, I have given away 30,000 with Mr. Beast and others in one day, but I want to be available every day. So as emergencies pop up, we can take care of people with real life problems in real time. And Shonda says, two of my boys desperately need glasses. Both broke theirs beyond repair. And I am out of contacts without the funds to do a contact exam. Any help is huge. Here's a picture of uh, G and Adam. And May 14th is when she posts this and she says, groceries for my boys and me, please. Which I think is sick because of course, like I said, Timothy didn't get any of those. Well, besides the freaking hot sauce and bread. Anyway, so Pulte on May 20th says, first $500 rent. And Shauna says, please, no clue how we're going to make it this month. Housing market is killing us. She posts her current balance. So now remember, May 2022, that's less than two months before Timothy dies. May 29th, I'm giving another thousand to someone random who retweets this in the next 24 hours. Must be following me so I can DM you if you win. And Shauna says, done. And then June 2nd, Pulte says, we'll feed 20 families who otherwise would not have food tonight. She says, here, please have Raymond for my boys, but have to skip the meal myself till payday tomorrow. Oh my God, you mean skip the meal for Timothy. So now she's pretending that she's just this great mother who, oh, she's, she's gonna give her kids the food over her, she'll just skip a meal to feed her boys. Liar. Okay, so June 3rd, Pulte says, I said $1,200 today. Paid $500, so we have $700 more to go. Not $500. My bad. Shonda says, perfect amount to cover rent for my boys and me. And she sh shows her current balance is now $695. You have past due bill from June 1st, 2022. And then June 7th, so this is a, a almost exactly a month before Timothy dies. He dies July 6th. 
So she says, please, for my boys and me. Gas is so high, it's cut out grocery budget in half right now. And then June 7th, Pote says, groceries today. And Shonda says, have three boys. I'm supporting by myself right now due to husband's stroke. No disability or anything has come through for him yet. Ugh. I will eat Raymond or go hungry, but need food for my boys. Ew, it's making me sick. Because she's acting like she's just, oh, I'll go hungry for just got to feed my boys as you're freaking starving, Timothy. You're such a liar. It's making me oh, sick to, to see her post this crap. Like, oh, I won't eat. I just need money for my boys. And you don't give Timothy food. He's basically less than a month away from dying of starvation. While you're nice and healthy and got some meat on your bones, you're eating very well, you freaking liar. Anyway, um, once again, would pay rent, would be huge. She posts this rent due. And then he says, $1,000. She says, would be life-changing, would be huge for rent, gas, and groceries for my three boys and me. And then June 18, he says, 1000 She says, please, would be life-changing. So it says, first $250. She says, please, gr gas and groceries for my boys and me for the week. That's June 18th. June 20th, he says, how many people's gas tanks could we fill up with $2,500 at $50 each? She says, takes 100 to fill my tank, but any help is huge. June 12th, she says, so my law school just announced that we will be online for classes again this fall. And I have a huge midterm tonight at 7.30 EDT. I'm going to climb the walls. So this is actually going back to 2020. These are just, the other ones were replies that I just read. These are posts. So then June 15th, 2020, she says, anyone that knows me knows I don't have a racist bone in my body. So don't start spewing crap like that here. I want to share legal analysis of Atlanta done by a trial lawyer. Make your own judgments with info. And she posts... Georgia Wendy shooting, legal thoughts. The police investigation began after a 911 call that a man was asleep or passed out in the Wendy's drive through lane. Here's her in G and the dog. Okay, so that's all of the tweets or Twitter stuff. I mean, there's obviously more, but those are the, the most interesting things that I found. As far as like her talking about groceries and stuff, I just find it very sickening. It, what she, oh, I'll starve. Ugh. All right, so let's go on to some of the court documents for the from the child custody stuff. Okay, so let me read you some court documents from the custody stuff, like back before, well, I guess right after they got divorced and she lost the, um, basically lost rights to see her kids. There's like child support stuff and, all right, this isn't going to be in any particular order, but okay, so we have June 24th, 2010. So we knew, we know their divorce um, ended in 2010. So this is the disillusion. So it says entry of appearance, respondent Shonda M. Ferguson enters her appearance herein, acknowledge receipt of the petition filed herein, and has reviewed the decree of dissolution of marriage and degree of divorce and has approved the decree by signing her name. So that was June 24th. Okay, so I am really confused here. Well, I mean, maybe not that confused. But if you look at Shonda's Facebook, now remember, Shonda and Eric got a divorce in 2010, okay? He ends up marrying Trish. I don't even know what year, actually. But he ends up marrying Trish shortly after that, right? I think it's in 2011, or maybe it's 2013. So the reason that I think 2011 is because she got married to somebody in 2011. I know it says Trish Ferguson, but I think that'll just fill in the name of what your current name is. So because her current name on Facebook is Trish Ferguson, I think that'll always do that regardless if that was her name back then. I'm not 100% sure. If it's not, then, then for sure she married Ferguson because her name is Trish Ferguson right there but I, I don't know I don't want to say 100% but probably most likely unless if she got married to somebody else in 2011 divorced him real quick and then married um Eric some shortly after that she had two marriages close together it's possible some people do but probably I'm guessing that she probably did marry him in 2011 Eric I feel like I have records of that somewhere I'll have to look that up but it's not that important the year. I mean, we know he ends up marrying her. So look, in 2009, so that would be a year before Shonda and Eric got a divorce, Shonda posts, well, I guess it wouldn't be a year because I think they got a divorce. I think it was June. So this is already December. But anyway, it says, my sis Trish. Okay, she's not blood related, but she might as well be. 
she loving our daughter as her own right now with Jack on his shoulder. If we all look tired, it's because we did 22 plus hours of driving in about 25 to 26 hours. Was worth it though. So we're, this is Trisha. This is the one he ends up marrying. Is it not? Same name. Looks like her. She calls her her sis. Okay, she's not blood related, but she's loving our daughter as her own. So you mean to tell me that she basically slid in and freaking was friends of the family, was a friend, treating the kids as like an aunt, you know, because she's calling her my sis, so like more like an aunt. And then all of a sudden her husband marries her. So did they start having an affair or something when he was still married to Shonda? I don't know. I thought that was quite interesting. So real quick again, Trisha is the one that her ex-husband marries but in 2009 Shonda would still be married to Eric they don't divorce until 2010 he ends up marrying her Trish weird anyway just thought that was interesting all right before I go back to the documents I want to read some of these posts I had read them actually in um a long live like one of the first lives that well maybe a second or third live I did on this case like a couple months ago but I'm just going to read a few of them that pertains to either her and Eric or their situation with the kids you know like who has them you know what's going on with them because I think it's important because we're talking about this with the documents that I'm going to read after this. It goes over like the, ch the child custody kind of stuff that we're trying to piece together and put together and try to figure out exactly what happened. Still not 100% on everything. I wish I had a little bit more details, but December 18th, 2009. We will get to see all four kids on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, provided some people get their heads out of their butts on the last bit of paperwork needed to get the older boys over to my brother and sister-in-law's place. As thankful as I am for that, it's a double-edged sword. Never had to say bye to them on those days. Somebody responds, so glad that you should get to see them, but so sorry that things have dragged on this long. Shonda responds, thanks, this is beyond ridiculous. I've never seen anything so slow. Only the government can get away with this. And a different person responds, Will you get to be together all at the same time? I know that would make this bittersweet. Shonda says, hugs. Thanks, sis. Yes. Originally, they were saying Nolan and Millie had to be separated. But they've backed off of that and will allow us to have all four as long as we don't allow those two to be alone together. Yes, it's bittersweet, but things are progressing much faster than normal from what I'm told. Sure doesn't feel that way, though. Very confusing, though, because this is saying Nolan and Millie, okay? But we saw the teachers say that there's a, a SA case against Paul and Timothy, and they weren't allowed to be together. So is, is there also one between Nolan and Millie? And then that person responds, so excited for you. Enjoy your time with them. Hugs your way. And Shonda responds, thank you. Hugs you back. I still have those teacher's books for you. Let me know the next time you'll be anywhere nearby and I'll get them to you. December 11th, 2009. Got to see the munchkins today. They're doing okay. Want to be home. It's definitely bittersweet. I wouldn't give up seeing them for anything, but leaving them there is like ripping my heart out again and again. Here's hoping and praying for good news on Tuesday. And then Shauna says, thank you so much, Shannon. Oh, does anybody know the song? I want to hear it now. So I'm not sure what she's responding to. Thank you. Thank you for finding it. I feel like either some of these people either like deleted their Facebook accounts or deleted the thread on their end or something. Because you could see Shonda's remarks, but not a lot of the other people's. So I think that's what's going on. Because you can't see what she's responding to. But it says, okay, thank you for finding it. Oh my god, yep, I'm bawling. Thank you for showing me that though. Nods and nods. Not really able to talk beyond that. Thank you, sis. Love you too. And then somebody else responds, you are a wonderful, you are a wonderful mommy. I bet you they are freaking kicking, kicking themselves for saying that now. And they couldn't have known. You know what I'm saying? I'm not blaming these people that probably got fooled by her and thought she was, you know. Anyway, Shauna says, thank you, Meg. I'm trying to hold it together at the moment. And then another person responds, hang in there praying for good news. 
Somebody else says it's crying. And Shonda says, thank you, Kristen. Yeah, I bawled that. that song is amazing. And then someone else says, don't know the song, but still have the wishes and love. And then Shonda says, it's okay, Shannon. It's really special and you have to go look it up. Says it's amazing. Has this picture of Timothy, September 17th, 2009. This is our youngest, Timothy, and the PJs I made for him. The fabric is actually a checked fabric, but it's hard to see in this. Isn't the pose awesome? Okay, December 11th, 2009. Things have calmed down enough now to post. Found out last night that someone has laid a hand on my daughter, across her face no less, before she was put with my sis. Can anybody say ticked beyond belief? Somebody says, say what? And Shauna says, yeah, she told me about this on the phone last night. We reported it first thing this morning. We're going to make sure the woman is thrown in jail for it. Thanks, Sarah. This is just insane. Uh, you know what's insane, Shonda? What you did to Timothy. That's freaking insane. It's uh, talking about, I mean, yeah, it's wrong for somebody to have slapped your daughter. But what you did to Timothy, if you think that's insane, what do you think starving and torturing your son to death? What do you call that? December 15th, 2009, returns home again empty-handed, but not quite as bad as previously. We now get to see them with the people they're with, mostly friends and family, and will most likely be whenever they allow it, which is whenever we want. We'll get to see at least the three oldest for Christmas, still working on a placement for Timothy. Anybody that can care for an adorable three-year-old? And then Shonda responds under this comment okay i hate facebook's limit on status characters we'll get to see at least the oldest three on christmas but not millie and nolan together dumb there again the millie and nolan together thing guess it's better than nothing timothy is actually in a foster home where we can't call him some stupid policy and regular foster homes the two oldest boys are in a shelter until my brother and sister-in-law's background checks from alabama come in then they'll go to them they're supposed to be in this week thankfully i honestly don't know how far they can go i'm willing to consider just about anything at this point to ensure we know where they are We've got january 15th 2010 says sighs and wonders when this nightmare is going to end seeing them more often is huge but then saying goodbye sucks especially when several of them cry and don't want to go ignorance is forgivable stupidity and idiocy are not and those are what caused all of this yeah your stupidity and your evilness and your just yeah evilness i mean that's all i can't even think of an, a, another perfect word Anyway, somebody responds and says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Matthew 6.26 Shauna says, Thanks, Meg. I needed that. Another person responds, Hugs you so tight. I continue to wish and pray and can't believe this is all going on. It's not even the stupidity that bothers me. It's the power issues of petty bureaucrats. Who now have no reason to keep them away? Grr. I try so hard to get it right every day. I still think it's criminal. Sorry. Very passionate about this. Shauna says, hugs back. Thanks, sis. Yeah, I know. It's pretty pathetic. And I agree. It's criminal. Trust me. You have every right to be passionate about it. Stuff like this is your life's work. December 21st, 2009, is asking for prayers today. The last piece of paperwork from Alabama should get the two older boys over to my brother and sister-in-law's house today. Tomorrow at the least. But we're asking for prayers for it to be today. I will keep everyone posted. Somebody responds, praying for it to be done. Shauna says, thank you. Somebody else says, you're at the top of my prayer list. Shauna says, thank you. December 19th, 2009, Shauna says, is looking forward to seeing our little girl tonight. We can get three hours with her and get to tuck her into bed before leaving. I talked to the people Timothy is now with from here on out. They're awesome. Got to talk to him last night as well. As much as a three-year-old talks on the phone, lol, things are finally working out slowly. Yeah, maybe you should have just let them freaking take care of them. You should have kept him with them. Ugh. Oh, man, it makes me sick. 
January 23rd, 2010. Well, there are a couple of pics of me and my photos and on the profile, but here's one of me and the kids last night. Sorry I didn't post a pic of kids sooner. Josie, been crazy busy, so take your pic. Rod, LOL, picture of all of them. Okay, so this is January 22nd, 2010. Shonda posts, just had a bittersweet evening, good first week in a new venture. Great to see my little ones. Awful to say goodbye. When will the madness end? It never fails to amaze me how people can admit you've done nothing wrong and still drag you through one of the most horrific circumstances possible at this stage in life. Still not not willing to take accountability for something she did, I'm sure. She's acting like, oh, you know, they admitted we didn't do anything wrong, but they're still... I'm guessing it has to do with the child support or child custody stuff. That they're admitting that they did nothing wrong, but yet they're still making them jump through hoops to be able to see the kids and stuff. I'm guessing that's what she's talking about. Anyway... Somebody responds that says, this too shall pass. If you ever need to talk or a shoulder to cry on, well, you can go to Eric. Just kidding. I am there for you, sis. A miracle will happen. I feel it. Shauna says, thank you, sis. Really appreciate that. This situation is awful. Uh, somebody else says, we're still praying for you and your family, Shonda. Shonda responds, thank you all so much. David, February 16th is the next date to look to. Here's hoping. And in the meantime, once a week is way better than once every four weeks. Thanks to everyone for their prayers through all of this. Means a lot. I know there has to be a reason for all of this. Haven't figured out for sure what it is yet, but guess we'll see. So this is 2010, right? So you'll see these posts are from either 2009 or 2010. So this is, a, you know, a year or so leading up to their divorce they got the kids taken away and they, 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 they don't get to see him, right? Somehow he gets them back. She's still not allowed to see them. Then they get a divorce, goes through all the custody. She has to pay child support because she's still not allowed to have custody of them. And she was still only given three hours a month. Remember? Three hours a month, which we will see in the documents coming up, okay? And then, I just wanted to point this out, February 2010, number five and counting down to our anniversary. Eric has put up with me for almost 11 years, and she counts down. This is February 2010, and this is December 2009. So in February, it looks like their marriage is doing good, at least enough where she's like celebrating the anniversary and saying nice things about him. Two months before that, she's hanging out with Trish, the one he ends up marrying. I'm pretty sure in 2011, so a year after they divorced, a year after she's uh, celebrating her anniversary and saying how great he is. Weird. So she's acting like, oh, it's my sis, but not blood related. She's treating the kids as my own. Hmm. I just wonder if he, like, there was an affair or whatever, and that was the reason they got a divorce. Which I don't feel bad for Shonda. I'm not saying that, but I'm just trying to understand the whole dynamics and how everything happened. We're trying to, like, put together everything. So, I mean, we as in me and you guys. <laughs> but, yeah, you can see number four counting down. Eric is absolutely nuts at times. Yes, that's a good thing usually. Eric is so laid back and easy going. It drives me insane at times, but mostly it's amazing. Okay, now let's get to the court documents. Okay, back to the documents. So September 2nd, 2010, it says order granting joint application to waive at 90 day period. The parties pursue it to blah, 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 request the court to waive the 90 day period within which a final order may be issued. The court finds petitioner Eric Ferguson filed his petition on June 11th, 2010. The respondent Shonda M. Ferguson has entered her appearance and has indicated her approval of decree of divorce and dissolution of marriage by signing as a the entry of said degree. Four minor children have been born of the marriage. Eric, born in 2000. Paul, born in 2002. Millie, born 2004. Timothy, born in 2006. The petitioner and respondent are parties named in a proceeding in the juvenile division of the District Court of Oklahoma County, Oklahoma. The minor children of the parties are in the custody of the Oklahoma Department of 
Department of Human Services. The parties are currently exercising supervised visitation with their children as prescribed by orders of the juvenile court and are in the process of completing a prescribed treatment plan designed to lead the reunification with their children. Child support is currently being paid by the parties to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services for the support of their children. The court reserves the matter of child support to be paid by the non-custodial parent upon the resolution of the juvenile court proceeding. Good cause has been shown for the court to waive the 90-day period and proceed to issue a final order in the case. In this case, it is ordered, adjudged, and decreed that the 90-day period within which a final order may be issued is hereby waived and the court may issue a final order prior to such period. And then this is January 2011. It's signed by, well, Eric is the petitioner, Shonda is the respondent. And this is dated January 7th. Got the judge. It's application to terminate support alimony. So it's application to terminate support alimony. So it says petitioner Eric Ferguson appears in person and with counsel, James, uh, I don't know, what is that name? Uh, Ickerd, respondent Shonda Ferguson appears something petitioner application to terminate support alimony is granted and the support alimony continued in the decree of divorce entered in september 2010 is notified maybe notified to delete the support alimony okay so this is dated what does that say i don't even know i don't know what this says but this says january 19th 2012 so this is a year later it says, now on the 19th day of January 2012, the following appearances were made and proceedings held. So we had Shonda, this is the mother, Eric's the father. He had their attorneys. We have the children, Eric, Timothy, Paul, and Millie. The court, upon review of the record and documentary evidence submitted, and upon hearing statements of counsel and other present, as well as the testimony offered and being otherwise fully advised in the premises, finds, and it is so ordered as follows. 1. Jurisdiction. The court has jurisdiction over the parties and the subject name of this action pursuant to the applicable provisions of the Oklahoma Children's Code, the Uniform Child Co Custody and Enforcement, the Parental Kidnapping Prevention, Act and the Uniform Interstate Family Support. B. The Federal and State Indian Child Welfare Act do not apply. C. Venue is proper per 10 OS. D. This order supersedes any other order. 2. Is prior existing case none as to legal custody and or child support. Evidence reports from the Oklahoma Department of Human Services dated or created recommending placement with the father. That's uh, Paul and Eric. So I don't know why they did these at different dates, but basically they're saying Paul and Eric is to, are to be placed with Eric, the father, February 9th, 2011, Timothy, April 8th, 2011, and Millie, April 29th, 2011. Doesn't have that filled out. We have legal custody and visitation. The parents are Mother Shonda, Father Eric. Mother and father are not married. And then we have... Date of birth, legal custody too. So it has all the kids. Um, it says mother's visitation rights. The mother may visit the minor children as follows. All children listed, supervised, a set forth on attachment A. So she has super supervised visitation and then father's visitation isn't checked because he has the rights to him or custody. And then it says, D, removal of children from Oklahoma. Neither the father nor the mother may permanently remove the children from the state of Oklahoma without 60 days prior notice, the other parent in full compliance with the provisions. So they're not even allowed to leave the state of Oklahoma without a 60-day uh, notice to the courts. And then child support. Okay, so it's checked. So the mother, mother is determined to be the obliger and is ordered to pay child support in the amount of $968.86 per month and on the same day each month thereafter until further order of this court or until minor children reaches the age of 18 years if said children are regularly and continually enrolled in high school obliger shall pay a percentage of the reasonable and necessary medical dental orthodontic optometrical psychological and other physical or mental health expenses for the minor children not covered by insurance as i indicated in the attached guidelines as additional child support the child support guidelines were followed a copy of the child support computation sheet is attached as attachment b 
An immediate income assignment is ordered pursuant to 12 OS section 1171.3. A portion of obligers monthly or other periodic income shall be assigned to the custodian in an amount sufficient to ensure payment of the monthly support obligation including any arrearage and judgment payments. The assignment is effective immediately, provided, however, obliger remains responsible for making payments to the Department of Human Services in any month when an income assignment is not in effect or does not pay the full amount under the order. All child support payments shall be made by employer's check, cashier's check, money order, or government check, payable to the Department of Human Services, identified with the F. GN number on the face of the payment and mailed to blah, blah, blah. All required parties are custodians to keep the central registry f informed of the current address of record. And then it says paternity. Eric Ferguson was determined to be the biological father of the above named children by court order entered in the District of Oklahoma S County, State of Oklahoma, and case number. Termination of juvenile court jurisdiction effect of current custody and child support orders. Upon entry of this order, the juvenile court's jurisdiction over the children listed in section 4 above will terminate. However, the court's determination of legal custody shall remain in full force and effect and shall control over any prior custody and or child support order entered in any prior proceeding or existing administrative or district court action. 6. Directive to the court clerk. It, the clerk of the juvenile court must transmit this order within 10 calendar days to the clerk of the court of any county in which a custody proceeding involving the children is pending or if such case does not exist. To the clerk of the court in which the parent given custody resides. The clerk of the receiving court must immediately upon receipt of this order file the order in the pending case or if no case exists open a file without a filing fee and assigned a case number. The clerk of the receiving court must immediately upon receipt PF this order, file the order in the prior existing or pending case, or if no such case exists, open a new FD file without a filing fee and assign a new FD case number. The clerk of the receiving court shall send by first class mail Okay, we'll skip some of this. This is just all of them signed. And, you know, people remember everybody was asking, like, did she spell her name with an O? Well, she spelled it with an A here. A here. Now, that doesn't mean her birth name. I mean, maybe she, it was with an O. Maybe now, maybe she changed it. I don't know why her sister wrote it with an O. So maybe it was a typo on the court's end, you know. Visitation supervised by either PSC or safe exchange at the mother's choice at mother's expense for any supervision costs. Mother is allowed to visit the children three hours per month. Mother may choose to exercise visitation in one three-hour visit or two one-and-one-half-hour visits. So she only gets three hours a month and it's supervised. Okay, so this is dated October 11, 2011. Obliger is Shonda other APD Tracy. So now on this 23rd day of September 2011, this matter is set forth for hearing and the court makes the following order regarding child support. Okay, the court being informed by evidence presented and hearing from the parties and counsel finds that this court has jurisdiction over the parties in the subject matter of this action. The court therefore finds orders and, de and decrees as follows. So looks like all of them were born in North Carolina. So it names all the kids. And there has been a material change in circumstances since the child support order was entered as follows. Here is the change. It says, the existing child support order entered in JD 09467 in the juvenile division of the District Court of Oklahoma County on August 11th, 2011 for children Paul, Timothy, Millie, and Eric Ferguson is modified to reflect the actual gross income of Shonda Vander Ark. This order entered on August 11, 2011, modified the child support order previously entered on November 16, 2009 in JD 09467 in the Juvenile Division of the District Court of Oklahoma County. Shonda Vander Ark has a duty to provide support for the minor children who are the subject of this action and shall pay child support in the following amounts in accordance with the attached support computation sheet. Payments shall begin November 1st, 2011.
2011 and continue on the same day of each month thereafter until the children reach the age of 18 years, provided that if the last minor child residing with the custodian reaches the age of 18 years and is still attending high school, child support shall continue until the age of 20 years, so long as the child is regularly enrolled in and attending high school, including other means of high school education or an alternative high school education program. So child support obligation subtotal is 968, and then... No, there's zero for cash medical support, zero for ongoing medical support. And so total obligation to be paid by obliger. The child support and obligation is set in accordance with the child support guidelines without deviation. And a copy of the child support computation sheet is attached here too. Okay, so we have... In the event that one or more children returns to the physical custody of the obliger, the obliger shall pay child support in the following amounts effective the first day of the month after the children is returned. So it breaks it down per kid. So if she had one, it would be 464, two would be 668, three would be 781, but four is 968.86 says the child support obligation shall be divided proportionally if children are placed with different custodians. This order shall be in effect in any month in which the children do not reside in the, uh, with the obliger. And then past due child support or support for a prior period. The issue of child support owed by obliger for a period prior to this order is reserved for future determination. So this makes me wonder here, since she still had child support, so she would have, Millie and Timothy would have been under 18 when she took Timothy in, okay? So I'm confused here. If, was she paying that out still? And if not, why weren't they freaking arresting her or keeping her checks or whatever for not paying child support? Because if she, nobody, she didn't legally have Timothy, right? So in the law's eyes, she would have still owed child support for Timothy. So she would have potentially still owed $668 well, I don't know what she was making that last year. I'm not sure because this was back in 2013 or whatever. Oh, this was back in 2011, actually. So I don't know. It depends what she was making. But was she, you know what I'm saying? Would it, was she paying that child support? Oh, wait. So this was 2015 up until 2015. And then going forward, that's what she had to pay. So from basically 2011 to 2015, that was what she was paying. And then going forward until she had a change in income, basically, then it would have changed. So I don't know after that what happened. Um, if she ended up, they go by what you make, you know. So depending on what her job was and how much she made, it could be different than that. It could be more or less. But fast forward to 2021. So as far as Timothy, legally, they didn't know she had him. You know what I'm saying? So she would have still had to pay it. So I'm wondering how that was all worked out or if she owed. I'll see if I could try to find anything, but I, I haven't been able to as far as anything more with, you know, what happened with all of this, you know, more recently. Okay, so let's see. Past due child support or support for a prior period. The issue of child support owed by obliger for a period prior to this order is reserved for future determination. Genetic test costs. Judgment is granted against obliger in the amount of NA for costs of genetic testing to determine paternity. The obliger shall pay $10 per month in installment payments towards the judgment beginning in this blank, so I'm not sure whatever came of that, or in accordance with the payment plan prescribed in previous paragraph until all judgment are paid in full. The judgment shall accrue interest at the statutory rate. Medical support definitions. Reasonable in cost means dependent coverage does not exceed 5% of the party's gross income. Reasonable in cost for mother is in, in an amount not to exceed $195 per month. Reasonable in cost for father is an amount not to exceed $140.92 per month. Accessible means there are available providers appropriate to meet the children's individual health care needs within 60 miles one way from the primary residence of the children. Medical support orders choose one from options one, two, or three. And they choose, and the number one is checked off and it says option one, 
Accessible Employer Sponsored or Other Group Medical Insurance. So medical support orders. It says option one, accessible employer sponsored or other group medical insurance. What's checked is father has dependent health insurance in effect or available through an employer sponsored or other group plan and shall provide the insurance until further order of the court. Okay, nothing else is checked here. So none of these are checked. So we're not going to read any of that. None of this is filled in. So... Okay, so this has a check mark. So it's um, the state of Oklahoma Child Support Services has no evidence that the custodian has been informed regarding the legal significance of the address of record for service of process and whether protection of the custodian's home address is needed due to family violence. Therefore, an address of record for service of process for the custodian is not ordered. The judge and attorney signed it and it says this is to certify that copies of the foregoing order for child support were served as follows in person on this date to this 10 11 11 district attorney october 11 2011 attorney for the obliger okay so this is in the matter of the ferguson children it says calculation of number of children in this case obliger person who pays is enter father or mother and it's it says mother there's four children base monthly obligation gross monthly income all sources except income specifically excluded by 430s section 118b so we have father makes two thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars and thirty one cents that's monthly and she makes three thousand nine hundred dollars a month combined six thousand seven hundred and eighteen a month it's pretty good really i mean Dang it, dude. There's there, That is no excuse for the kids that did not have nice clothes, a full stomach. Um, you know how the teacher, Timothy's teacher was saying how like he came to school with dirty clothes. They would have to uh, give him a shower at school. He came to school without lunches, no food. He'd be starving. They'd send him home for with food. I mean, they were doing fine. That There is no excuse for not giving your children stuff. That's just ridiculous. It looks like they very well could have afforded nice clothes. I mean, at least, you know, clean clothes and dang it. And I know they had, you know, there was a lot of kids there or well, four kids when she was there. But then I know when, you know, she moved out, he married and had, you know, a bunch of basically stepkids. But I don't know if his new wife worked too. But I mean, still, they would have been able to at least have some clothes you know and some clean clothes anyway so you have total gross monthly income it's the same all right this is the same stuff basically yeah so it goes over monthly health insurance premium costs the premium represents the actual premium cost for any children in this case only. Insurance premium worksheet is available if needed. Use cash medical support if any child is not covered by insurance. So $180 father. So that's for the insurance. Monthly health insurance share for each parent. Percentage share of income in line four multiplied by total current insurance cost for all persons in line 13. So for him, it was $75.51. And for her, it was $104.49. Then it says total premium cost adjustment to base monthly obligation. Line 14 minus line 13. Amount may be negative. So for his, it's negative $104.49. And for hers, it's not negative, positive $104.49. And then this is a... Uh, base monthly child support obligation, less adjustments for child care. So that's what she had to pay, 968. So it's 5% of gross monthly income for obliger. Line two multiplied by 5%. This represents the maximum amount of total medical allowed. So hers comes to $195. And then his is blank. And all the, uh, the other ones are zero besides a uh, child support portion. If line 16B is positive, Line 20 for obliger. If line 16B is negative, reduce line 20 by line 16B. Enter zero if negative. So it comes to $968.86 for Shonda. 
So in the marriage of Eric and Shonda, so this is 2015, but they got divorced in 2010. Let's see what this is. On the 8th, day of February 2015, the Office of Administrative Hearings of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services and District Court entered a judgment in the amount of past due child support in the amount of $19,334.34 from the period of November 1st, 2011 until January 31st, 2015, plus interest in the amount of $4,645.10 from the period of November 1st, 2011 until January 31st, 2015, for a total judgment of the amount of $23,988.44. That's what she Shonda owed because she wasn't paying child support. Don't feel bad. People get on dads for not paying it all the time. Same thing goes for mothers. Okay, so this is Ferguson Children versus Shonda. This is February 18th, 2015. Now on the 17th day of February, 2015, the above entitled matter comes for hearing at the request of Shonda upon the notice order of child support lien issued pursuant to 56 Oklahoma Statute 237A by the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. So it says, appearances are entered by the Oklahoma Department of Human Services, Child Support Services, appears through its attorney or representation. In person and through counsel, Jim something. Um, the obliger, Shonda M. Vander Ark, appears in person pro se. Okay, so it says the court being advised in the premises, taking the evidence and hearing statements from the parties and counsel, finds and therefore orders, it judges and decrees that the Office of Administrative Hearings, Child Support, has jurisdiction over the parties and subject matter of this action. Shonda M. Vander Ark is the obliger who is obligated to make payments under a support order. Judgment for past due support, the obliger owes past due support in the principal amount of $19,334.34 for the time period of November 1st, 2011 through the including January 31st, 2015. This amount is inclusive of the balance due and owing on any judgment previously determined for past due support. This amount is inclusive of the balance due and owing of any judgment previously determined for past due support. Judgment for said amount is hereby determined and awarded to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services obligee against the obligeur in accordance with 43 OS 137. Any support arrearages that may have accrued either prior to or subsequent to said period are not addressed in this proceeding and are reserved for a later determination. Further, said amount of past due support does not include any unreimbursed medical and child care expenses that have not been reduced to judgment and the obliger's liability for these expenses. If any, is not addressed in this proceeding and is subject to later determination by an appropriate tribunal. Interest on delinquent child support. Delinquent child support payments accruing under an Oklahoma order draw interest at the rate of 10% per year from the date they become delinquent. It's a lot, man, especially if you have like a high amount, 10%. And the interest shall be collected in the same manner as the payments upon which the interest accrues. The court makes additional rulings as follows. The applicable ruling is marked with an X. The obliger owes interest in the amount of $4,645.10, representing the accrued interest on the delinquent child support owed for the period of November 1st, 2011 through January 31st, 2015. Any interest that may have accrued either prior to or subsequent to this period is not addressed in this proceeding and is subject to later determination. So she owes a lot of money, at least back then. I don't know if she ended up paying it. Let's skip. So then we have a media income assignment. An immediate income assignment is hereby ordered and a portion of the obliger's income, earnings, benefits, and other payments are hereby assigned to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services obligee in amounts to sufficient to ensure payment of the obliger's monthly support obligations, including payment of the past due support. Provided, however, if monies are not being withheld from the obliger's earnings or income, it is the responsibility of the obliger to make the current support payments and the judgment payments ordered in this administrative enforcement order to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. The income assignment shall remain in effect as long as the order upon which it is based as is in effect. 
as long as any support monies are owed or until further order of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services or of the Tribunal of Com Competent Jurisdiction. Current support, the obliger's current and continuing monthly support obligation is $968.86. This amount shall be withheld from the obliger's salary, wages, income, or other benefits or payments subject to the statutory limitations set forth in 12 OS 1171.2. Should the amount of current support be modified, the income assignment shall continue to be in full force and in effect for the modified support amount. Payment of past due support. The obliger is hereby ordered to satisfy the past due support monies by making monthly payments to the Oklahoma Department of Human Services in the minimum amount of $48.44 beginning of the first day of March 2015. So basically on top of her $968, she has to pay $48 and some change or whatever um, because that, that is going to go towards what she owes. So it'll, it'll take her a while to pay back 19000 plus 4000 So like 20 or almost 24000 she owes. So that's just estimate. I think they end up adding it up the exact amount. But so paying 48 a month to pay that off. But I mean, they have to do something doable. They, I mean, they you know what I'm saying? They have to do something that the person is going to be able to afford every month. So that's how they do it. And then it says, yeah, so paying the 48 every month, starting March and continuing each month thereafter until all past due support currently due and hereafter accruing and accrued interests are paid in full. Provided, however, this payment schedule shall not be the exclusive collection remedy for the collection of the past due support. Payment shall first be applied to the principal balances and distributed in accordance with federal and state statutes, regulations, and rules. Further, the monthly payment on the past due support is in addition to the previously ordered current monthly support in the amount of $968.50. 86 cents, making the obliger's total monthly payment the sum of $1,017.30. So that's what she will owe every month, provided, however, when the current support is no longer due, the amount previously applied to ongoing current support shall be applied to the past due support, and the obliger shall continue to pay the total amount of $48.44 per month until all past due support and the accrued interests are paid in full or until further order of the court or of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services. The monthly payments on the past due support shall be withheld from the obliger's income and earnings. So this is under Title 43 Oklahoma Statutes and a rearage payment schedule shall not exceed three years unless such schedule would be unjust unequitable, unreasonable, or inappropriate under the circumstances in this case, or not in the best interests of the children involved. The payment schedule ordered herein, and it's they checked off does exceed three years for the following reasons. The obliger's financial situation precludes a larger payment amount. So this one's other collection remedies. And then uh, it says medical support enrollment. I'm gonna skip all this here. Okay, that's all. I'm not going to read all the last three pages of you. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to. I think we got the basics of what's going on. Read those other documents. Uh, basically, she just didn't pay for years and now she owes. So she's got to pay. Doesn't have custody of her kids. Okay, so here is the last document. This is from March 5th, 2015. It says, Judgment. On the 18th day of February 2015, the Office of Administrative Hearings of Oklahoma Department of Human Service in Oklahoma, Home County District, Court Number, blah, 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 entered a judgment against Shonda Vanderark for past due child support in the amount of $19,333.43 from the period of November 1st, 2011 until January 31st, 2015, plus interest in the amount of $4,645.10 for the period of November 1st, 2011 to January 15th, 2015 for a total judgment in the amount of $23,988.44. A copy of administrative order is attached. This judgment shall operate as a lien upon Block 4, Lot 13 of the Cullen 5, 5th edition, Section 10, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so basically, so I looked up child support liens because I just wanted to kind of understand what the heck was going on here. So it says child support liens are legal notices that are placed on a person's property to secure the payment of overdue child support. Any asset held by the non-custodial parent, real or personal, is subject to a lien filling if the non-custodial parent accumulates an arrearage. 
So she did accumul accumulate in arrearage. Okay. So this could apply to assets such as real estate. Okay. So it looks like they put a lien on her property. Maybe is what it looks like on the property that whatever that property is. There's an address. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that's all I have for this video. Okay. So so I do have something that I'm gonna. I need your guys' help with. Maybe if if anybody wants to make a donation. Um, I don't normally ask. I don't think I've ever asked actually for donations to help out. So I'm requesting. I'm not gonna tell you what yet, <laughs> but it's about this case and um, it's something that is not out. I've, nobody has it yet. And it should be interesting, but it's almost, I think it's like 600 and it's $674.93 is what this stuff is going to cost me. And so if any of you guys want to chip in and give donations, I have PayPal. My link's in the description for PayPal. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to set up a cash app. I don't have it set up yet, but when I do, I'll put that in the description for those of you that don't have PayPal. And anything will help. Anything will be appreciated. Appreciated, definitely. I normally don't like to ask for help, but I am struggling. You know, Courtney Clinic files cost almost $600, and I wasn't able to even break even with those from the videos I made. So, yeah, files cost a lot. And this will be, this should be kind of interesting. Like I said, what I'm ordering, I nobody has. I haven't seen anybody have it. So... It should be really interesting. It should be multiple videos. I mean, I should be able to make multiple videos on it. And it's it's pertaining to this case, the Shonda and Paul case. So, like I said, anything could help. If you don't have anything, you, you can't make a donation, don't worry. But I just thought I, I'd ask if anybody is able to help out with it. Um, that would be much appreciated. Um, I hate even asking. It's, it's not like in my... Uh, my normal and my personality or I don't even know what the right word is but usually I'm not very good at asking for help but I could really this yeah since my channel's not doing very well lately yeah so that would just just help anything li even anything little I mean it'll help you know go, definitely go towards towards these uh what I'm getting so um and like I said I'll when I do, I will tell you when it comes closer to getting them, I will tell you what it is. And, um, and I could show you, you know, the people that donated, I could show you the receipt if you want, and I'll keep track of what, what people do donate for it. So, you know, you just kind of show where we're at with that. But, um, but yeah, like I said, don't feel bad if you can't, but I just thought I'd ask if anybody wants to pitch in. It will be very much appreciated. All right, so I'm going to end this here, and um, yeah, I'm very anxious to get to get this. Like I said, it'll be something that will probably make multiple videos, I'm guessing. So yeah, it should be really interesting. I'm hoping, because I know what it is, but yet I don't know what's going to be in them if that makes sense so okay so i have another song for you and a music video <laughs> um you know how i've been just putting like a song with some visuals that i put together um at the end of my videos so i have another one of those for you hope you enjoy it have a good day or night or whatever it is there <laughs> bye Say a prayer, and we'll let it go. All oh, say I'm sliding down.